Hello everybody, this is Giver Anxiety, and I'm bringing you guys an Age of Empires Online Best of 5 series. Uh, this is going to be Anubis vs. the Jackal vs. Archibalds. Um, they're both pretty, both really good players and uh, pretty even skill wise, so I think we should be in for an entertaining best of five here. Uh, close some of these windows. And we have Anubis playing down here in the south, uh, playing as the Egyptians, and Anubis the Jackal is playing as the Greek up in the north. So, there's, um, Anubis is going straight for that hunt, uh, standard play. You know, you might, you go on berries right away, and then as soon as you, you scout around your base, you know, with your scout. And as soon as you find uh, a close hunt, you send your villagers to build a store house near the hunt. Because the uh, hunt gather rate is quicker. And you can always hover over the villager if you're curious about the gather rate. And it shows very in-depth all the gather rates right there. So it's really nice. And that's, it's like this for like every unit in the game if you're wondering about you know unit stats at all. So that's very nice. Um, this, is, this map is called Equal Footing. This is uh, the most common map. Um... You have most played map a lot. Of, it's just a very balanced map. It's it's wide open, so you can raid. Uh, resources are, you know, very fair. There's no imbalances. So a lot of people really like playing on this map. So we're starting off game one on equal footing. And so Nubis sent villager to his woodline, and he just built a storehouse right there, somewhere in the middle of that woodline. And same thing for Archibalds. And with the Egyptians, you do start with a Priestess of Ra. So Archibalds has this Priestess of Ra empowering his town center. And it's making his villagers train a little bit quicker. Training at 16 seconds, you're going to see Greek actually train at 15. So the thing with this is Egyptians actually age up to age 2 by building a Temple of Ra, which you know is basically a wonder. So they can still train villagers while they're aging up to, the net, to all the different ages. So that's why their standard build train time is a little bit higher than other civs. Like Greek, you have to, you know, click on the on the age up button, and you can't train villagers while aging with like Greek and other civs. So um, Archibald is actually already building a second storehouse on a second hunt. Ooh, this one deer is getting away. You always want to kill the deer uh, really near the storehouse, and if you wait too long, they'll start running away from the foundation. So I think Archie might have uh, forgot about this one. It, it might run back um, a little bit later, kind of like randomly, you know, walks around the foundation. So hopefully they'll wander back to one of these foundations. And Archibalds is gathering stone now. Uh, very common to build a second town center as soon as you hit age two. That's pretty much just the meta game right now. Uh, it's really strong. You um, want villagers in this game are very important. You want to. You know, have high villager counts. Their, their gathering rate is pretty high, so um, it's yeah, it, it's good to get a second TC early and you know get those villas pumping out. So we have Anubis the Jackal aging up to age two, and he's doing the same thing. He built a storehouse on his stone mine, and he's gathering some stone here. Let me check uh, real quick. All right, uh, I forgot. I might have to move these over a tiny bit so they fit alright see how that looks alright so Archibalds is in age 2 now and he does have enough stone he needs a little bit more wood but he does have a few people on wood and he's gonna build his town center pretty forward here so these guys are actually waiting right now got a couple of villagers there you go they just dropped off that wood so he's building a pretty forward town center here which is nice it's gonna be um, it's me right on this gold mine, so that's a you know a drop source for the for villagers gathering gold, and then there's also this big hunt and berries over here, and it's also you know kind of taking some map control, so it's very nice. It's a bit aggressive. It can be a little risky, um, you know, if there's a lot of early pressure. But when Archie actually might have accidentally forgot about these two. Oh yeah, I think he was chopping wood to. He must have. There was a straggler tree right here that was really close to the storehouse. So he must have put these two villagers to chop that one tree just to get that second TC up quicker. And then once that tree finished, he must have forgot about them. And so they went from this tree all the way to here. So now these two are walking pretty far. Um, you should probably notice that pretty soon. But yeah, it's definitely don't want your villagers walking like that. And we do have a second Priestess of Ra train. And that's very common for Egyptians. So he just made another one it's basically as soon as he had age 2. And uh, this Priestess of Ra is going to start empowering this town center. So... You'll get that villager 
training time boost from both TCs, and we do have a stable going down for RC balls. Let's take a look. Oop, take a look at Anubis's base. Uh, he's on second TC, and no military building quite yet. And villagers chop through these wood lines really quickly, and um, so you have to rebuild storehouses like pretty fre frequently, so the villagers aren't walking too far. Um, it's really kind of fun and. Uh, high APM part of the game where you have to you know keep track of your wood villagers take a look at the stream alright and yeah let me know in the chat guys if there's any issues with the uh, sound or anything like that I think it is okay but um, I'll be glancing and trying to take a look while I uh, do my commentary oh man and Archibald still actually has not noticed these two villagers so he's gonna be pretty mad once he when he finally notices that. Uh, Archibalds is now building a storehouse on this gold gold deposit, and he's adding in a second stable. So Archie's going for those camels, and this is a very uh, interesting matchup. I remember Zuda Zuda used to commentate Age of Empires Online play quite a bit, and of course, obviously, he did a lot of commentary for AoE three. And one of the things when he would commentate, he would always say that in AoE three British. First French were like he considered that like the classical matchup, um, you know both like European civs that were from the original game, uh, the you know the not the expansions, a little bit of lag here, um, and he yeah so those that was always interesting Brit, Brits first French and he would say that Greek versus Egyptian was basically the the British first French because the Greek and the Egyptians were the first two civs released in Age of Empires Online so this is one of those kind of like really classic matchups. And Anubis is actually starting two barracks. Uh, that is good. That will help. You know, spearmen. He is making spearmen, so they do counter camels. He def he won't have a lot of mobility or speed since he's making these slow spearmen. Uh, but he will be able to defend from raids. And here we go. We do have four camels coming in for Archibalds, but we, two spearmen are in perfect location. So Archibalds is going to take some hits here if he's uh doesn't notice. He's just going for one villager. He's just going to maybe sacrifice it. And he's going to get one villager, so that is really nice. And, ooh, oh, one, one more spearman coming in from the side. He does get one camel. Uh, but one camel for, for one spearman, you know, not bad. Or, I mean, one, one camel for one villager. And this is actually forcing Anubis the Jackal to already make farms. So he's giving up map control, and uh, it's not absolutely necessary to build farms this early. Usually you don't want to, but... He only he built three, so it's not like he's making a ton of farms. Um, oh, and he's building an academy already. But he he does have these two boars back here, so he can uh, gather from there. And he even has he has two boars over here also. So um, kind of just setting up the farms also help set up your economy for like the later game. You didn't absolutely need them right now, but they do help uh, when you get so many villagers and there's so much to do, and you know you need to spend your APM in other ways. So it looks like Anubis is actually, oh wait, he's trying to age up, but he's really gold starved right now. And he, he, no, okay, he's actually getting Spearman Champion. So it looked like he was going to maybe try to do a semi-fast age 3. Um, and while I was doing all this talking, Archibald's actually hit up the age 3. So Anubis probably saw that, and Archibald's already building his third town center. And Egyptians have a really strong uh, stable composition. They have these camel riders. Which are very strong units and just very fast. 11 speed, I believe. Uh, 11 speed is the fastest unit in the game. I think there's only one other unit that's 11 speed in the game. And they also have these very strong chariot archers, which are um, a ranged cavalry unit. So, actually, they're a archer. They're archer type, but they're ranged. So, and they're fast. So, very good units. And Anubis is starting to float quite a bit of resources. I think he's gonna. Not there he goes. Not so now he is aging up. And yep, here's this one chariot archer. Ooh. And our uh, Anubis is gonna have to move his villagers here. He does have some spearmen, but not a whole lot right now. He's down in pop by quite a bit, and it's to an Egyptian. So let's take a look at the villager count here. 46 villagers for Anubis, and 44 for Archibald. So Anubis is is equalized is fine. Um, he's gonna be H3 pretty soon here, and he did get the upgrade philosophy, which um, reduces the research time of all of your upgrades by I believe it's 40 percent pretty sure it's 40 percent and since aging up is that is technically a uh, like a research the age up time also get becomes 40 percent quicker so 
That's very nice. It's really nice when you get philosophy and make that age up time quicker. And all of your eco upgrades, armory upgrades, they all go uh, faster f from that upgrade. So Archibald has a nice little army here. He's looking to do some raiding, but Anubis is very... Uh, Villagers are in this very small, you know, kind of compact space here. And, ooh, these are some cool-looking hoplites. Eight, hoplites are H3 infantry unit that's built from the barracks. It'll be interesting to see what composition Anubis goes for here. Because uh, Anubis, Anubis is a good player, but I've actually only seen him play Egypt. He's a main Egyptian player, and just, I guess, uh, yeah, this is the first time I saw him on Greek, so... I played quite a few games versus him, and he would always be the Egyptian player, and I would always be the Greek player. So I'm sure he's probably picked up some things from from our games, and it, I'm curious to see how he's going to play this matchup with, with him being on the Greek side for once. So he's making some Seri. Uh, he's going to lose two villagers here. Might have forgot about them. Um, Take a look at this villager count. 51 villagers to 61 for Archibald. So now Archibald is starting to take uh, this villager lead quite a bit. And he does have like control of pretty much the entire map. And actually pretty interesting. He's building a fortress. Um, it is a pretty defensive fortress. But it's a, it's a little bit in the middle. Um, so he's going to be going for elephants actually. Uh, war elephants they're called. Um, very good unit. Uh, there were a couple balance patches since this beta, since Age of Empires Online has been released on this beta server, or on the server. We actually have been able to get a few balance patches out, which have been amazing. Um, you can read about the balance changes at ESO-community.net. ESO uh, balance patches are posted there. Um, no, not a ton of major changes, but we did want to fix some of the really important things that change. Changes that were obviously needed, and one of the really big ones were war elephants. In the past, they were definitely they were way too strong, and we I believe all their speed was 11. One of the guys can say it. They were either 11, maybe they might have been 10 speed, but or actually they might have been 9 speed. They but we reduced their speed to 7. But yeah, they were just a fast. They're a very strong unit. Um, they're still good, but they were definitely too good in the past. And it was due kind of due to their speed, and they're just all around. Um, and here we go. We have a big engagement here, and there's all overall uh, effectiveness. Uh, so Anubis is actually um, losing this engagement pretty bad here, and it's actually starting to look pretty bad for Anubis. And Archibald is now pushing on Anubis' main town center right here. And Anubis is struggling to get, to get units out. Especially when there's already two elephants on the th a third elephant now. Oh, and he built a fortress, but it is quite a bit from, you know, on, on the side here. And it's not really protecting the main base here. And with Greek, there's no unit that Greek can make from the fortress in H3. So he built this fortress, meaning for it to be, you know, just a good defensive structure. But he... Fortresses cost quite a bit of resources. 300 wood, 400 stone. So all of those resources went to a building, you know, instead of military. And he kind of just got overwhelmed here. And here you go, you've seen these elephants do splash damage and just tearing apart these villagers. So I, I do think uh, war elephants, I think they're in a pretty good spot right now. They, like, like I said earlier, uh, they were definitely too strong before in the past. Um, and I, the balance patch, I think, definitely helped there a lot. So pre uh gg right there game one does go to archie balls and um he made that pretty quickly just a good nice h3 timing push that nubis just wasn't ready for and nubis is saying that he's gonna go back to egypt so he probably he definitely is uh more comfortable with egypt um so he's gonna be switching to egypt for game two Alright, so let me catch up on this chat here. Yep, 
Looks like everything is running fine. Alright, let me take a quick look at the post-game stats here. Uh, really interesting and cool post-game stats they have, have here in Age of Empires Online. They have a build order where you can actually see every single thing that was trained, even uh, when storehouses are built. So very, very in-depth houses. Uh, very in-depth, so you can use that. Use this to help with build orders. Uh, all resources gathered. And Archibald did I'll gather him by about 3,000 resources. Villagers, uh, only one more villager trained for Anubis. So I think Archibald's really just hit that nice timing push. Um, let's take a look at current villager population. And... Uh, oh, why did I do that? Okay, so Archibald's is the Archibald's is the blue one here. Uh, he was down in villagers for a little bit, but then he really he did take that lead, and, and then towards the end, uh, Anubis after he lost that fight, he lost all of his villagers also. So that was GG. All right, I believe Anubis is switching to Egypt, and we're gonna get underway with game two here. And I was trying to get game capture to work, but it looks like it wasn't, so I'm going to have to do this OBS style. Um, is Nubus online? Alright, so we're doing the loser of the previous game picks the map, picks the next map. Alright, so Anubis is picking Arabia. Let's get underway here. Alright, we're getting underway with game two here. Best of five, Archibalds versus Anubis the Jackal. Uh, Anubis the Jackal did lose game one, so he is picking the map for game two, and he chooses Arabia. Very int Ooh, this is actually going to be an Egyptian mirror too, so... Because Nubis did change to... He did go back to, um... Uh, he did go back to... Uh, Egypt. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yes, this is the largest map in the map pool. Uh, as you can see, it is a very large map. And, um... It's going to be an Egyptian mirror, so this should be a pretty interesting one. I think I, uh, I guess I kind of got the colors wrong. I, I wanted Archie to be blue. That's all right. Um, all right, Egyptian Mirror. Uh, Archie Balls is starting on berries here because on this map, um, the hunts much, f the hunts are much further than pretty much every other map so a lot of times you do have to start on berries when you're playing on Arabia and same as Anubis and sometimes there are elephants that spawn around your TC and you can sometimes kind of uh, use your scout to bring them close to the TC but uh, it was not the case for these two and Anubis actually has a very unique um, wood line here uh, the openings and the maps, especially on Arabia, can vary, you know, quite a bit from one game to the next. Um, this is pretty funky looking wood line here, really thin, but blocks everything off. And there's just this one small opening, and then of course some openings down here. Um, so you look at Archie's layout. Ar Archie's is looking a bit more standard. I feel like this is how it kind of usually looks. A large opening here. He's got his wood line over here, and um, and he yeah, had some more openings over here. 
So there are sheep on this, or goats. There are goats on this map, so both players are using their scout to uh, try to gather all these goats. And Anubis is actually empowering the uh, storehouse here. So these villagers, instead of dropping off 10 food each time, they're dropping off 11 food. So you can either... Uh, um, it's interesting to always watch where Egyptian players put their Priestess of Ra. Before in the past, people would always put on TCs to get your villagers to train a little bit quicker. But you do sometimes see uh, players put you know their Priestess on a storehouse. Archibald does have... Her his priestess of Ra empowering his town center. So here we go. We have the age up going up to age two, building his temple of Ra. And this is a very large map, like I said earlier. So that makes gritty play even um, more standard and more expected. Since, since the map is so large, it's hard to punish, you know, fast town centers and really gritty play. So. It does look like both of them are gathering stones, so they are going to be going for that fast second town center. Yep. And the rage up times are going to be really similar. Uh, looks like Anubis' Jackal is just going to get up pretty much just a few seconds later than Archibald's. Be interesting to see when what their TC timings are, who gets their town center place first. Uh, Nubis is going for the hand saw upgrade, so very good upgrade. Increases your gathering rate for wood for trees uh, by 15%. Very important upgrade. Usually you want to get that like at the start of age two, pretty much every game. And one thing you can do, you can also like kind of micro your villagers when they're on wood lines. And like how I said before, they chop through the trees really quickly. So, like in this case, Anubis could pull these villagers and just put them on these closer trees. Because right now they are walking a little bit far. So, you, so when you don't want to build a second storehouse, you can just move them like manually to closer trees. And then once they you know start getting even further and further away, then you have to replace uh, storehouses. So here we go. Now Anubis is empowering this TC that is being placed down. So, and he did train a second Priestess of Ra, so this town center will get built quicker because this Priestess of Ra is empowering it. And Archibald is doing the same exact thing. Now Archibald is upgrading Handsaw. Let's take a look at the villager counts. Oh, Anubis is actually housed right here. 17 villagers to 18. Um, did Archibald's... Oh, yep, Archibald did build a house, so... Uh, Nubis did get housed a little bit here. He's waiting for his TC to give him more population, but that did cause him to get housed a bit. And there he goes. Now he queues up a lot of villagers from both town centers. And Archibald also has his second TC up. And we have the first military building coming down, and it's a stable for Archibalds. And a stable also coming down for Anubis the Jackal. So in Egyptian mirrors, it often is uh, camel wars because camels are very fast. And uh, the Egyptian spearmen, they do counter cavalry like camels, but the Egyptian spearmen are actually really weak, especially uh, just like the standard H2 ones. Um, so a lot of times, Egyptian players do just go for straight camels to get that mobility and, um, you know, can even take out spearmen in low numbers. And we do have Picker's Glove research for Archibalds that will increase his gathering rate for berries. And Anubis the Jackal did also get Picker's Glove. Um, Archibalds did research Loom, which increases his villagers' hit points by, what is it, 50? 40%. Anubis throwing down his second stable here. Let's see, his Archibalds is still on one stable. Um, oh wow, and Archibald's building a very, very early market. Um, this is interesting because it's not far at all. This Usually, you know, when you build a market, you want to set up a caravan route. Um, but if this is for the purpose of a caravan route, this market would be, this would be a very short, short route. Uh, usually when you build your market, you want to build it more out here so the caravans are going further and, you know, get, getting more coin from each, uh, each time they drop off the coin. Let's 
Archibald is scouting out Anubis' base here. Second Sable is now coming down for Archibald's, and he is researching Pickaxe. Increases your gather rate for gold by 12%. So I'm pretty interested to see what Archibald is going to use this market for. Um, it could be just to buy and sell resources early, or it could to to start a caravan route and then maybe build a, a second market further away later in the game. We do have third. Uh, yep. Yeah. Alright, Camel's looking like they're going to engage, but Archibald does not have enough, so he's backed off there. And we do have a pretty early armory coming down for Anubis. And Archibald's already... Oh. The other day when, uh, remember like a couple months back, I had the base you know, like, that's from Hogan? Yeah. I don't know what it was, I might have gotten it. No, I'll, uh... Can't think of it right now, but I'll look into it. So Anubis Jackal is actually still in age two, and he might have a good timing push here. Um, Archibald, as you see, he did start making caravans from that market, and caravans are pretty expensive. They cost 50 wood and 50 food. Um, so this could be giving Anubis the Jackal a very good timing window. Oh, take the, there he goes. He takes that house out, but um, Archibald does have a good camel count here. He's actually has two more camels than Anubis right now. Um, Popwise, they're about the same. 41 villagers for Anubis and 51 villagers for Archibald. So, oh no, now Anubis is actually taking some bad engagements with, uh, he doesn't have all of his camels here. And now we got 12 on 12. Um, so very even right now in the camel war. We do have more camels coming for Arch or Anubis. Oh, but he's losing one. I uh, want to keep a close eye on your camels. Alright, so we have 12 right here and 13, so Anubis does have the lead by one right here. And here's these Egyptian Camel Wars. But all of uh, Anubis's units are coming from way back home. So his camels have a long way to walk while Archibalds are going to be able to join the fights much quicker. Um, but Anubis did have a small lead there, so he did win that fight. Now Anubis is uh, oops, looking like he's going to see if he can if there's any good targets for raiding. Already have that third town center up for Archibalds. Ooh, and now Archie is actually making chariot archers, but they are really expensive. They cost 80 wood and 80 coin. Um, and Campbell's cost 60 food and, and 40 coin. So, and honestly, um, chariot archers aren't the best unit versus camels. So, if Anubis just keeps spamming camels here, he might be able to... to uh, you know, kind of override uh, Archibald's military. And Archie does not have enough camels here to uh, push Anubis back. You have an empty key from Anubis. There he goes. He is queuing up more camels. Um, he is at... F okay, he is putting in now, making some villagers. 46 villagers to 56. So Archibald's is taking, the Archibald's is taking that eco lead by quite a bit right now. But if, uh, if Anubis m can punish him, then uh, it may not matter. Oh, there's one that, oh, could have killed that a really expensive chariot archer. Oh, this is, I really want to see Anubis just go in. Oh, and he's is getting an armory upgrade. Um, so most ar armory upgrades give you, with all their civs, you can get an armory upgrade that would give you 20% melee resistance or 20% um, pierce armor. But with the Egyptians, it's actually a two for one. Um... 
So you, you get the pierce and the melee armor in one upgrade. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, it's cheaper than the two separate ones, and it you know gets research in time of one upgrade. So it's really nice. Uh, here we go. We have a big engagement here. And uh, Archibald is holding this. He's, yeah. So Archibald does hold the engagement. Oh, Anubis did have a few other camels here. And his explorer he can even use. Um, we do have a lot of villagers here now wandering for Archibald. Let's see where they're looking to go. Oh, and, and a couple more camels going down for Anubis. So he does not having the best uh, control of his army. He's kind of letting his units get picked off like one by one. Um, and, ah, even more here. It, it is hard because this game does take so much APM. It is easy to kind of lose units like carelessly like that. But yeah, you definitely want to have to keep an eye on them. And here we go. So now Anubis is going to age three. But he's at 53 villagers while Archie's at 64. And uh, Archibald even has a larger military right now, so Archibald is definitely in commanding lead right now. Ooh, and Anubis has all of his villagers exposed. Oh, this does not look good for him right now. Um, yeah, he may lose all 10 villagers here. Unless if Anubis can get his military over here. But even then, he would Yeah, so he's just going to lose all these villagers. And wow, yeah, so there's, there's the GG. Anubis seeing that he's kind of behind in military and behind in eco. Alright, so 2-0 lead to Archibald in this best of 5. Let's see if Nubis can uh, win game 3 and keep this series alive. Alright, so Ar or Nubis actually picking equal footing, so he's not going to... I think he is one of the guys that plays on the more standard maps, um, so we're going to see equal footing once again. Alright, both these players are ready, so we're going to get underway and hop into Game 3 here. Uh, game 3 is going to be played on equal footing, and it's going to be an Egyptian mirror. So Archibald does have the 2-0 lead right now in this best of 5. Uh, I think I... Alright, we have the snow equal footing this time. The terrain can uh, change even on the same map, uh, just uh, you know the coloring, but for most part it's still the same map. So there are uh, sheep on this equal footing, and here's the hunt. Archibald is running to over to his hunt, build that storehouse. And same thing, ooh, Anubis' hunt is pretty far actually. Uh, he probably does have a closer hunt that he didn't explore quite yet. But he did decide to uh, kind of go way out here for the sun. But it, it is an Egyptian mirror, so e Egypt very rarely rushes in age one. So you usually don't have to worry about any like spear age one spearman rush. And here is a kind of yeah closer hunt that's even behind the sun center. So he should be okay even with this uh, far hunt that he chose. And we do have some of these alpine wolves here. So both players are just scouting the map, looking for these sheep, killing um, hunts, you know, that are nearby. And this wolf does attack the villager, um, but it does have 75 food, so that is a huntable. And we already have a storehouse coming down for Archibald's on the stone mine, so he's going to be going for that fast H2 town center. 
And I expect the same from Anubis. Yep, and here he goes. Ooh, this is really nice. It's getting kind of a two-for-one storehouse here. Where this storehouse will work together from the stone mine. And it will also work for villagers that will be on this berry patch later in the game. So that's really nice whenever you can uh, get that. Archibald's, yeah, his were a bit further, so he wasn't really lucky like that. But he actually, he does have kind of the same thing with this gold mine. He can build a storehouse right here, and it'll work for the gold mine and also work for those berries, so. So, nothing. Well, let's take a look at this sheep count. We do have six sheep for Anubis, and we have four for Archibald's. So nothing too crazy going on here, just the mirror, and there we go, we do have the Temple of Ra now, be, now being built for Anubis, and Temple of Ra is also going up for Archibalds. So this is another Egyptian mirror, and I'm expecting to see a lot of camels once again, camels on camels. So Anubis is choosing to empower his town center. Let's see, Archibalds is ooh, actually empowering his wood line. Interesting. All right, so that'll help him get his wood a little bit quicker for that second town center. And there. And there you go. Both of them are now age two. Oh, Archibald's uh, dropped off the stone and need a little bit more. There you go. Oh, actually needs one more and dropped off again. There he goes. Now he has this 300 uh, stone and needs a little bit more wood too. Uh, one more villager needs to drop off and then he'll be good to go. So he's going to build his second town center right here. Pretty good location right by this uh, gold mine and close to this hunt. So that's nice. Uh, Nubis is choosing to build his really defensive again. Um, not really claiming any more of the map. Um, it, it does add some extra protection, but like I said, it doesn't claim much more map. So, and we do have a second priest of, of Ra train for both of them. Um, Archibald is, is not empowering his town center; it's being built. He kept the one priestess of Ra on the wood line and put the new one on the town center. So, that's a little bit difference. And uh, Nubis is getting housed again, but he did get, research Loom while he was housed, so his town center was doing something there. So you see their builds are a little bit different. Archibald decides to build a house before his second town center gets up so he doesn't get housed at all so that he can keep making villagers and all that. And Anubis it, it does not build a second house which allows him to get his town center up a little bit quicker but he does have a little bit of idle TC time. But he did he use that idle TC time to research and upgrade so it might have canceled all, all that time out. So We do have a stable coming down for Anubis. And a stable coming down for Archibalds. Big surprise. And we have Hansel now being researched for Archibalds. Um, and Anubis already does have Hansel, and he didn't get researched Picker's Glove. Um, Archibalds did not get Picker's Glove quite yet. Oh, and actually, Archibald's has researched hunting dogs. Interesting. Okay, so Archibald's did research hunting dogs. He does have a good chunk of hunt right there. And he does have some more over here. And we have a second stable coming down for Archibald's. Ooh, and we do have a lot of sheep here. This is really nice. So these villagers... Very close drop-off point, and each time they're dropping off 10 instead, or they're dropping off 11 instead of 10 because of this priestess of Ra. And we do have a second stable going down for Anubis. And Archibalds, where were his sheep? Uh, looks like he already ate one through his sheep. Um, I, I don't think he had quite as many. Um, and he's not claiming this other hunt. Ooh, we do have one camel for Archibald is working on this storehouse, but uh, Nubis is getting two camels on him, so he he is going to get away, but he did take 300 HP off of him, so that's, that's always nice. Let's take a look at the villager count. We do have 33 villagers for Nubis and 31 for Archibald, so Nubis is in a good spot right here. Archibald is now researching... 
who's researching loom, but he's also researching wheelbarrow, which costs 100 wood and 100 gold, and it gives you plus 20 carrying capacity and plus 5% movement speed for villagers. So that is a very good upgrade. It's always interesting to see when um, when players do decide to get that upgrade because it is a little bit expensive and if you get it really early it's you know would slow down your production facilities but it is a very good eco upgrade at the same time so you don't want to wait too late and Nubis is gonna pick off this camel here but that does leave an opening for Archibald to get in this wood line and he's gonna kill one villager um, for Anubis and he's gonna make all these wood villagers uh, have to get retasked So both of them just massing up camels, 37 votes for Anubis and 36 for Archibalds. Archibalds is being the aggressive one here, uh, doing the raiding and kind of controlling the map. But he does have less camels right now. And some more houses come down for Anubis. So Archibalds is going to go in for a raid here, but he's actually going to get picked off. And yeah, he's just going to have to back out. Didn't take any damage though, so... And I think oh, we do have a watch post going down for Archibald, so that is nice. It does give a lot of vision, uh, but it does cost 75 wood. So, um, see, it looks like Archibald does have less camels right now. Oh, and yep, yeah, this is why Archibald is going to age three right now, building his temple of set. Um, and let's see if Nubis could punish this. We Nubis is building an armory. Interesting. So really similar to the last game on Arabia, and Nubis is researching mounted training, which gives your cavalry 5% movement speed and 10% snare resistance. So Anubis once again, ooh, and here we go. I think Anubis was ready to head out, but um, but Archibald sending his camels on this wood line, and uh, they're actually going to get away t safely too. So Anubis either needs to trap these camels or kind of push on Archie's base. Uh, he needs to bring his camels in from different angles here so he can kind of get a trap or a little bit of a surround here. But Archibald is just uh, continuing to run around with his camels. Ooh, and now he's actually engaging on just these couple of camels and villagers. Noob has got to keep moving his rest of his camels here. Uh, they're going to run in some of these guys. And oh wow, okay, so now Anubis is even going to H3, so he's not gonna have that all-in push where if he if he stayed age 2 and just kept massing up camels I think he I think he can really could have had a good timing to just uh, overwhelm Archibalds with a uh, large mass of camels so we have 42 villagers from Nubis and 49 from Archibalds so once again Archibalds is looking like he's in a good spot again very look, looking like a very similar game um, to the last one And Archibald's is sending in some more camels here on the side. Ooh, and these are nice. He's gonna be he's gonna pick off these two houses, which is pretty nice. And he's now raiding this wood line. And Nubis is uh new Nub Nubis is uh just done with this. He's gonna just all out push here, and this is very interesting. It could work. Uh he has to Yeah, he has a lot of camels here right now in the main base of Archibald, so Archibald's could be in a bad spot, but he's kind of the same Archibald's as his camels in uh, Nubis' main base, so it's looking like a little bit of a base trade. Um, and Archibald's is training these cherry archers, and like I said, they are really expensive, and they're not the best versus uh, camels. So this will be very interesting to see how this base trade goes. Uh, let's take a look at the villager count. We have 39, 38 villagers, 36, oh, 36 for Anubis, and 35 for Archibald, so they both killed a lot of villagers. Um, but they're actually really even on the bill counts. And Anubis, his army is still really large. And Archibald's his army, Archibald's uh, lost his army at Anubis' base. So I think Anubis is in a really good spot here. Uh, more villagers trying to come out for Archibald's to gather resources. And yeah, this is what I don't like for in Egyptian mirrors. He's training these chariot archers, but they're so expensive. They're a lot more expensive than camels, camel riders. And they're really not good versus camels. Um, so this is actually looking very good for Ar for Anubis. Uh, he was in a bad position, but he I'll, he had a really good decision to just go for Archibald's main base, and um, it's looking like it's paying off really well right now. And it's a good villager count: 35 votes for Anubis and 27 for Archibald. So Archibald's 
yeah, it's looking like Nubis is going to take this game three and stay alive in the series. Archibald is in a very bad spot right now, down in villager count and down in military by quite a lot. And there we go, there's the GG. So Nubis is able to win one game and stay alive in the series. Let's take a look at this post game stats. Uh, all resources gathered very close. Both um, Archibald's actually gathered a little bit more, like 200 more only. Uh, very similar on units trained and villagers. So you look at current uh, villager population. Uh, Archibalds did have the pretty big lead there, but uh, Nubis did that really strong counter push, and he killed a lot of villagers there. And let's see, current military pop. This would be a really good one. So Nubis did have that a uh, military pop the entire time, and. You can see Archibald's military pop just plummet, go all the way down there while Nubis is, didn't really uh, you know, lose that much. So very good game by both of them. Nubis is able to take one game. Alright, Nubis just needs one minute and we're going to hop into game four. All right, we are about to get underway in game four here. All right, Archibald really likes playing on equal footing, so he lost last game, so he's picking the map here, and he chooses equal footing. And it looks like we're going to be seeing some more Egyptian mirrors. I'm actually surprised Archibald is playing Egyptian also, because uh, his main civ lately has been Celts. But, yeah, so I'm actually... I kind of just uh, thought of that, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. Alright, there we go. This time I think the colors are right. Um, new to, and I guess, observing and well, streaming with this uh, overlay up, where uh, you have to kind of make sure the player has the right color, you know, because there's the, you can see the, the win total next to him, na his name. So I think it should be good this game. Alright, so once again, another Egyptian mirror. Uh, playing on equal footing once again. The series is at two to one in Archie's lead. Oh, actually, Archie should be red or it should be blue. 
Uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to control that, but that's fine. At least the number is by RC, so uh, it's okay. Ooh, and Archibald is building a storehouse on his wood line, but he probably didn't scout this, and it's actually in a really bad spot. You, it would be much better if you'd build it, you know, more in here in this little, like, kind of little nook and cranny there. But he's actually building it at, like, at a point in the forest, so once he kind of chops through these initial trees, he's going to have to rebuild another one. And Archibald is getting that age one hunting dog, so interesting to see that. I'm not sure if he did age one hunting dogs last game or not. I know he did get hunting about dogs, but it might have been an age two. I'm not too sure. So um, Archibald this time is the one that's going pretty far forward for his hunt. He did have a closer and safer one back here, but this is probably just the one that <clears throat> he scouted first. And Nubis' hunt's a bit closer. Not the biggest deal though. Like I said. You don't see any age one spear rushes uh, when when um, it's an Egyptian mirror. And once again, they are going for that early second town center. Um, Nubis is building a storehouse on this stone mine. It's kind of not the best place storehouse. You usually want it kind of placed even with the mine so that villagers can fit in between the storehouse and the mine, and they can just gather it and then and kind of like turn around and drop off the resources very quickly and efficiently. But he's kind of building it at a point, um, so not the best. Yeah, here, exactly, this is what I'm talking about. Archibald's storehouse is perfect. Villagers gather the stone, and you can see as soon as they, they're they done, they, they you can barely even see them turn around in the animation. But, yep, they have the storehouse right behind them, so they just, like, drop it off automatically. Um, once you see, these two will probably be okay, but once you start seeing maybe, like, three or four, yeah, you'll see this third villager here, he's going to have to walk a little bit when he drops it off. Um, so especially once you start getting more than you know three villagers, it, it's um, you know see he had to walk a little bit there. So you want to get those storehouses that place down perfectly. Archibald is now empowering in the storehouse, so he's getting 11 stone dropped off each time instead of 10. They are both aging up to age two. Our newest is actually in age two right now. Let's see if there's anything going on in the chat. All right. Oh yep, and I guess I should mention this. I kind of forgot to mention this, but we do. We already announced that there is going to be an Age of Empires online tournament. It's going going to be called the Zuda Zuda Classic, and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know Zuda Zuda, um, very popular Age of Empires player and streamer. He played a lot of AoE three and also a lot of Age of Empires online, and he decided to fund the first tournament. So he did it. He donated five hundred dollars, um, all by himself to fund the first tournament. So um that's can't wait uh there's not an exact date yet but um it will most likely be in august maybe even aimed around mid-august no no exact date but expect august and um all news posts and updates on the tournament will be posted at eso-community.net so make sure to register there and uh just stay up to date with uh the news on the tournament and anything age jumpers online related all right, so we do have both town centers now going down. We have those two second priestess of Raz. Oh, we actually have a. S okay, he might be. Uh, maybe, maybe he will, but still build the storehouse. Not sure if he was gonna cancel this or not. And we do have that second storehouse now come down for Archibalds. No hunting dogs for Anubis. He did get he did get Pigger's love actually though. Um, and handsaw. So Archibald's went for Pigger's glove, not Pigger's love. He went for handsaw and hunting dogs. Interesting. So the Egyptian mirror can be, I wouldn't say boring, but it can be um, very standard and kind of the format where you only train one type of unit. If you're an Age of Empires 3 guy, I, I can probably compare to um, kind of like British Mirrors, where in British Mirrors you only train like muskets, you know, very large percent of the time. Um, in Egyptian Mirrors, you only train camels until like somebody gets to H3 and then they might mix in some chariot archers. So we're going to see that same thing these camel composition, camel riders.
I just see one person actually prints in the chat. Give us. Do you guys not have game sound? Is there not enough game sound? I hear game sound fine, but um. Or maybe, maybe it was game sound. Mm. It's always, we'll try this. It's always a little tricky because once battles do start, it does get a lot louder. And you, of course, don't want the sound to cancel out the commentator. But yeah, just let me know about sound, game sounds, music sound, any of that, you know. Compared to my voice, let me know if you want me to adjust it at all. I'm going to hide this chat. Yep, thanks Cure, uh, AZT Cure in the chat there for letting me know. And uh, I did see one person, Prince, in the chat saying, uh, maybe commentating about bad macro, and as when AOE 3 players do see this, they may think that, wow, a lot of these players are floating a ton of resources, like they may not be the best players, but the the thing in a Age Jumpers in line, your resources gather rate is a lot quicker, and you have, you have a lot of villagers, so... Um, it's very hard to keep your resource total low, especially when you get like in the later game. Um, so that's one of the main things that Age of Empires 3 players and pretty much anybody struggles with when they start playing this game is spending your, it's, you want to spend your resources very quickly and not float them, of course. Um, but that's much easier said than done. It's not, it's not like in Age of Empires 3 where you see somebody floating like a thousand resources of a type, like that's crazy if they're not aging, but in this game, um, it's it's not as crazy because the resources just come in so quick and it's really challenging to keep those resource totals lo really low um, especially like in the late game like I said alright so we do have the camel riders out Ooh, Archibald's is moving in here six camels two six but we do have defenders advantage here camels are going see it might be a little bit loud now let me know uh, once those camels really started engaging, they that sound got you know quite a bit louder. I'm not sure if that's too loud compared to my voice. And we do have that early armory going down. So the newest does like to build his armory pretty early. Oh, and uh, Archibald's actually built it also. Interesting. He went for the melee uh, attack armory tech rather than the. Oh, well, now he's getting the armor one. And I actually kind of I like that, especially when it's camel wars. Because they would also increase their attack versus the uh, buildings, so. More Camel Wars going on here. And Anubis, he does not have any armory techs right now. So, Archibald has the armory tech advantage. I feel like... Alright, Archibald is just finding some more villagers here. I feel like the sound may be a little too loud, let me know in the chat. If it's okay once these camels start uh, hitting each other. Ooh, and we do have a Priestess of Ra. Anubis is pulling his Priestess. Um, so that's very nice. The Priestess of Ra is able to heal in, in combat, which is uh, really nice. So I, I like that, that Anubis decided to pull the Priestess. So he is going to be able to hold this engagement. Let's get a villager count. 43 villagers for Anubis and 44 for Archibalds. So very even. Um, Archibald is ahead in pop by quite a bit though. And ooh, Anubis is, yeah, he's uh, losing this camel count here. And all of a sudden, Anubis is it's looking like he might be in a scary position. More camels coming in for Archibalds. We do have this Priestess of Ra helping out, but there are a lot of camels for Archib Archibalds. And uh, Anubis is actually food starved really badly right now. Ooh, and he does le lose his Priestess of Ra. So. He does get a few more camels out here. I think he, he will clean this up, but um, it looks like some vital TC time for both of them. Kind of both are <clears throat> focusing on making camels so they don't get behind there. 43 villagers for Anubis and 48 for Archibalds. And Archibalds does have the cam <coughs> camel lead. Jesus. Ooh, and now Archibalds is getting on these uh, villagers on the um, that are gathering from the berries.
And now our Schmoz's camels are on um, Nubis' woodline villagers. They are kind of trapped here, so Nubis will be able to clean up these camels, but it depends how many villagers our Schmoz is going to pick off here. So let's get a villager count. 41 villagers for Nubis to 52 for Arshi. Um, so Archibald is now starting to take quite a bit of lead in this villager count. And he does still have the camel lead. So this is looking uh, a little bit scary here for Anubis. Not sure if he's going to be able to hold this pressure. Archibald just continues to to uh, r keep making, you know, running in with more camels. And yeah, this is looking pretty rough for Anubis right now. Let's see if he can get some uh, camels together and uh, try to regroup here. But he is behind the villager count by quite a lot at this point. And Archibald is just uh, overwhelming Anubis here. And there's the GG. So game three does go to Archibalds. So Archibalds does take this best of five, three to one. Well played. Um, let me know in the chat if you guys have any questions. Uh, I, and I'm not sure if there's a media team guys here, but I could p perhaps maybe stream another series, maybe a best of three. Or best of five. Um, I guess I'll kind of see what you know, see what everybody says, and so let's take a look at the post-game stats. Resources, Archibalds did. I'll gather them by about a thousand resources. And current villager population, Archibalds. Yeah, Nubis really just stopped training villagers there for a while when he he felt he was really under pressure. I suppose Archibalds uh has to take advantage of that. And the military population. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Archibald's always just had a little bit more. And he just kept winning these small engagements. And kept getting a bit larger and larger advantage. And we could do a best of seven. If uh, Nubis wants to play another one. I suppose we could do that. Age of Emperors Online is back. Um, if you guys can post some links. Oh, I actually don't have the chat loaded. Alright, so we may extend this to a best of seven. RC volunteering saying that he would be fine it to extend it to best of seven so we can get a little bit more games here. Uh, if somebody can post a link in the chat, I'd appreciate it. Or you could just go to. Uh... Uh, you could go to ESO community.net, and uh, that's the. ESOC community forums for Age of Empires 3 and Age of Empires Online. Uh, they also have a Discord. That link might the Discord link might be a little bit more helpful. I think uh, it's, you're allowed to post links on this channel. I don't think they automatically get deleted.
Alright, so uh, it looks like we're going to extend this to a best of seven so that we can stream a little bit more games for you guys. Oh god, Black Forest. All right. So we are continuing this best of five. Archibald volunteered, said, why not just make it a best of seven so we can have some more games for the stream. So we are continuing this. Right now, Archibald does have the 3-1 lead, and we are starting game five. Uh, Nubis picks the map. He picks Black Forest. And Anubis did switch back to, oh, actually Anubis switched to Greek and Archibald switched to Persia. So this will be nice. We'll have um, one new Civ to show you guys. You guys have not seen Persia in this series yet. And um, and we're back to a Greek player. And so this is a very interesting map. Uh, it's kind of funny. Archibald was laughing when Anubis picked this map. Um, most players, most good players do not like this map at all and, like, never really play on it. Because it is pretty unstandard map uh, so it's kind of funny to see Nubis pick it uh, that's fine though um, you can look at the map you know on the mini map and it, this is called Black Forest and as you can see there are just a uh, very large forest pretty much everywhere and it makes for really tight choke points um, so yeah it's you know not much room for raiding it, um, but you know it, it can make for interesting games at the same time <clears throat> Alright, so Greek vs. Persia, uh, another good matchup. Ooh, Archibald is gathering wood from this storehouse that he used for hunts to for his hunt. Um, so this is interesting. This makes it look like he's going to go for a very early age 1 barracks. And we have not seen any age 1 rushing, and there it is. So Archibald places down his barracks in age 1. Um, so this, should be, this could be a really entertaining one. And... It, Every Civ, except Persia, has access to Spearmen in Age 1. But Persia are, are a little bit different. They do have Spearmen, but you cannot train their Spearmen until you're in Age 2. But when you're in Age 1, they have a unit called the Sparbara. And this unit is unique. The only Civ that has Sparbara is the Persian Civ. And it's, uh, it's a very tanky unit. It has a ton of pierce damage. And people often like to do Sparbara rushes because you can attack villagers under Town Center and just tank, tank so much TC fire. So this will be an uh, entertaining one and be really nice to see an H1 rush. And Anubis is, is going for that stone mine too. He's already building Soros on a stone mine. So Anubis might get caught off guard here uh, by this H1 rush. At the same time, the map is pretty large. So it is going to take a while for these Sparbar to get over there. But so as you see, the first one is being trained. And here we go. The first Sparbar is out. I'll hover over his stats right here. 40 food and 10 coin. Um, 240 health, 9 da uh, melee damage. Snare is 0.50. And what's the speed? 6 speed. So the spar bars are now being rallied over to Anubis' base. And Anubis is already aging up to age 2. Um, but he is gathering stone. So it's looking like he's going to be going for that early second town center. And when he sees it, he does see the spar bar rush now. So... It'll be interesting to see if he panics and decides to drop down a barracks and make some hype to, uh, <clears throat> to push off this rush, or if he just continues to, um, you know, try to get that early second HT, eight, uh, H2 town center. And he, he is researching Loom, so this will help protect his villagers as soon as he ages up. Loom's going to be the first thing researched. But we do have two spar bars out, and they are now uh, hitting these villagers, but RC, or Nubis is pulling his villagers away. And he's putting them on these berries. So, um, it was one villager is getting pretty low, 
If he, he ooh, very close. He was maybe one hit away from dying there. So let's see. Uh, Archibald did make a few more spar bars, but he didn't commit very heavily to the Sarash. And he is actually now gathering stone for himself, so he's gonna be going for an early second TC also. Oh wow, he has eight goats. Wow, I think Anubis only had like two. Um, so Archibald did do a spar bar rush, but he, I think he may have only made. No, it looks like he probably made four spar bars total. So. Um, didn't commit really heavily to that, but even right now he did make Nubis cancel his TC placement right there. He's got two more annoying smart bars, and now Nubis is uh, placing down his second town center. And this would actually be really nice if he kills this uh, star house that's 50 wood that he's killing, and um, it's going to force Nubis to have to rebuild a star house in wood line. So that is a pretty nice pickup, actually. And Archibald is building his second town center really forward here. Oh, let me make sure these are right. Alright, so we do have a storehouse now going down on this wood line. Let's get a villager count. 16 villagers to 17. Okay, so it's not off. Uh, I did see Anubis did have a little bit of idle TC time, so I thought he might have been a little bit more behind in villagers, but nope. He's alright. Ooh, and Archibald does lose one spar bar there. It would have been nice if he would have been able to get him all the way back home. Because um, Persia does have a unique upgrade that only Persia has, and it's called A Tent. It costs 50 food and 50 wood, and it allows your storehouses to heal nearby units. Uh, which is really nice. So he could have brought that spar back home and got him healed up all the way back to full health. Uh, but he, he did get picked off there. And we have a stable now coming down for Archibalds. Let's see, Nubis, what is he looking at? Uh, still no military building. And he's now getting Picker's Love. Increase your gather rate for wood. And he's also getting Pickaxe. So both players just focusing on eco and Nubis even building a second storehouse before and getting wheelbarrow. So he's very economically focused right now before even chopping his first military building. And Archibald's already building his second stable. So he's going to have some ass bars out pretty early. Ooh, and he is making the made a spearman also. And yeah, he is making. So it looks like Archie is going for spearman and Asabara. And we still don't have a military building for Anubis. So. There's a chance that he might get overrun a little bit early, um, but there are just there are just a couple units, so it's not that scary. He is now he is dropping his first military building, and he is dropping a barracks in front of his two town centers. But these both town centers do fire, and they have uh, four, 24 DPS right now in H2. So they are gonna be, yeah, and they're focusing on the spearmen, so that's really nice. So this spearman is gonna die very quickly, and uh, this barracks should get up. Um, He's putting more villagers on just in case if it doesn't get off because it does take more damage. And he is repairing it even now. Uh, you could probably take these villagers off from repairing it. Um, and he's making spearmen out from his barracks. So, uh, Nubis is holding this aggression, but there are three S bars in the wood line right now, and he is looking like he might be off one villager. There are some spearmen, that villager did get away. Um, so, he actually did not pick, take, pick off any villagers there. He did almost lose one S bar. Oh, if he goes all the way back home to heal up this S bar, that would be really nice because he would basically just, you know, lose nothing there. And Greek don't have any way of healing any units in H2. So there's a couple of villagers that are really low HP that uh, Archibalds would be able to come back for later. Ooh, and Anubis is actually going age three, going for that um, fast age three, and he is gonna have to throw some villagers on stone here so he can get that most likely going for that third town center. And Archibalds, he is now researching aid tent. And we have 40 villagers for Archie and 37 for Anubis. And we have an archer round, archer range coming down for Archibald, so 
It's looking like he's staying age two for a bit, and he's gonna try to get aggressive. We do have our S bars scouting out the rest of the map here. Ooh, these are some cool looking spears for these uh, Greek spearmen. And of course, in this game, if you guys aren't aware, of course, gear and level does not affect unit stats at all, not in any way. Um, when you play champion mode PvP, which this is right now, and it's just you know competitive competitive PvP mode, uh, so you can be level one playing versus level 40, and you, there's no advantage, no disadvantage, it's level playing field. Uh, so Anubis is dropping down in archery range, and he's gathering that stone, so he's going to be able to build his third town center here. Uh, Archibald is looking for spots to pick off villagers, but Anubis is in this very small, um, has all of his units, you know, very closely here. Wow, so Anubis is actually building a fortress. Um, I guess he's really scared of an all-in push from Archibald, so he's being safe, maybe being too safe, but deciding to drop down a fortress right on top of his two-town centers, so. Now Archibald is going to age three, so. Let's get a villager count, 44 villagers to 49, so by not building this his TC before this fortress, he's going to fall behind more in villagers, which uh, is not good. He is putting some villagers on stone now, so. Ooh, and Archibald is looking like he wants to move in here. He does have good, uh, good amount of units. They are mainly just spear or S bars here, and uh, Anubis does have a lot of spearmen, so you'd be able to deal with that. We do have another archer range coming down for Archibalds. Very uh, fortified base right here with his fortress and two town centers. All right, a little bit of stalemate, stalemate right now. Um, that third TC should be coming down soon for Anubis here. He needs a little bit more stone. Uh oh, and Anubis is actually out in front. Yeah, there he goes. He does pull off his units very quickly. Um, Archibald's almost got a volley off with his archers, but he actually uh, accidentally canceled it when he ran back. And wow, look at this! Archibald's going way out here to basically take Anubis's berries. So that's, that's really nice, being really aggressive, and he built an immortal camp, which only the Persians can build, which allows you to train immortals, which only the Persians have. Very strong unit that counters uh, infantry. Let me get, here we go, take a look at his stats. It has a 2.5 bonus for its infantry, yep, okay, and uh, yeah, and it works as a ranged unit. It has a ranged attack and it also has a melee attack, so a really cool unit to see. And there we go, so we do have the third TC now being built for Anubis, and also third TC going down for Archibalds. And we do have a large force coming in for Archibalds here, and it looks like he's trying to attack from one of Anubis's weak points where this fortress may not be protecting. But this third TC does get up just in time. Um, so he does have 3rd TC fire, and even this fortress is over here getting some shots in. Uh, Nubis is pulling back his units here, as Archibald's, <coughs> Archibald's mass is pretty scary right now. So he's got to be careful not to waste these units. And now Archibald's uh, sending his ass bars around looking to see what he can pick off here. We do have 59 villagers to 67 already for Archibald, so Nubis is, is falling behind the villagers. Oh, and he picks off an armory. Very nice. This is, any little pickups like that is always really nice. Was the armory cost 200 wood, I believe, right? Where's that armory at? Yep, 200 wood built an armory, so basically just robbed him of 200 wood. And, uh, you know, and that building time, so that's really nice. So, Nubis trying to hold this engagement, uh, he does have defender's advantage. 
So he is ultimately going to hold this attack off. So you look at his wood line. These, yeah, these villagers are starting to walk pretty far for this wood line. He definitely needs to rebuild his storehouse here. Let's take a look at Archie's base. He is now dropping down some farms. Ooh, his wood line is getting a little bit ugly too here for some of these guys. Oh wow, I'm building a forward siege workshop. Very interesting. So we may be seeing some ramps here and a very heavy push. And Archibald does have a 20 pop advantage right now. So Nubis needs to get some military out here pretty quickly. Oh, and he, he did build a market and he's gathering a lot of stone, which I'm a little surprised about. He, oh, is he out of gold? Uh oh, he may be out of, oh no, he does have gold mine right here. What is he? What is he looking to do here? He may be trying to drop another fortress. Maybe he can gain more map control. And yep, we do have some rams being made from the siege forward siege work siege workshop. Wow, we have a second fortress being built, but ah, I don't really like this location. It's right, right on top of the first one, literally. And Greek have there's no units that you can train from a fortress in H3 for Greek. So this, these fortresses are purely for defensive purposes. Um, yeah, it's... And Archibald, is this still going to be able to attack from behind here? Um, the second fortress will probably... They, these might be able to get some shots in. Um, and we do have two rams already, so... Uh, six times multiplier versus building. These guys are very good. They do take out buildings quickly, so... Oh, and Anubis right now, his army is kind of out of position. If these rams go very quickly. Oh, and uh, Anubis already starting his caravan route, even though it's a very small one. And Anubis is going to have to repair this town center. He's going to have to grab some villagers and quickly repair this. Because, oh, and he's losing some villagers. I think he's trying to attack the ram with villagers. Okay, n there he goes. Now he starts um, repairing town center. So the town center should be okay. Villagers repair rate is very high. Um, but there's a very large army from, from Marcy Balls at the same time. Will these two fortresses, two fort fortresses, um, fire be able to help defend this? Very big moment right here. If uh, this TC goes down, and uh, this could be GG. Not sure if Anubis is able to hold this, and his army is dwindling down. <laughs> oh my God! Throwing down an emergency third fortress, and yeah, Archibald is looking like he's in a really good spot here. Uh, I think he may even get this TC here. One ram is almost dead. He should really focus the fortresses on the range units so to take out these range units quickly. Oh, and he's out of stone. He can't repair it. He just ran out of stone. So that TC does go down. And now he just has a lot of vital villagers. Oh, boy. He, his villagers are all running around. Not sure what they're doing. Archibald's meanwhile actually going to H4, so and that fortress does go down to the ram because while it was being constructed, it takes a lot more damage. So it, actually looking really bad for Anubis, and this could be the GG here if, uh, if Anubis can't find a way to hold this. And there's the GG. So Archibald takes what was that like game five? Well, he was up 3-1. That puts him the... F Whoa. Whoa. Yep. So Archibald is up game... Is up 4-1. to one. And then actually wins the best of 7. So that's actually it for that best of seven, and um, so now I guess we're see. I'm not sure if this may be an end to the stream. Um, ah, and it looks like Archibald is the same best of nine. Nubis agrees. So they want to just keep it going for a bit. Want to get exposure to this game because this is an awesome game, and. Um, it's going to be awesome once the tournament starts, so we do want to see a lot of the Age of Empires 3 players give this game a try.
Alright, so Nubis is actually choosing Coastal. Um, so this will be a really interesting one. I'm not sure Anubis is a big water player. Um, I think I played versus him once on Coastal before and he just ignored the water. And you're going to see water is very un important on this map. And you'll see why in a little bit. Alright. Getting underway with game 6. Nubis the Jackal playing versus Archibald's Persia vs. Greek. And this one is played on Coastal. This map is Coastal. So here we go. Very large C on this map. And um, C is very important on this map. So if, if there's any Age of Mythology players in the chat watching this stream, you guys might recognize this map because this map is basically pulled straight from Age of Mythology. Um, and on Age of Mythology, this map was called Mediterranean, and uh, it was a very, very fun map there, and uh, it's a very fun map in Age of Person Line also. Archibald is sending, going for a pretty far hunt, but he is sending his villagers together from these close trees. There's usually like one or two very close trees next to like, the, usually almost every hunt. So you can decide to gather from these two trees, because they do each contain 100 wood. Or you can go and build your storehouse, you know, right on your wood line right away. So, by gathering from these, it, you know, it saves that initial early wood. And, it, you know, it can allow you to get your whatever building you want up earlier. And, wow, here we go. Archibald is doing an age one racks and a spar bar rush on coastal. Uh, very large map, especially when you're going around the sea. Very kind of long walkway for these far bars. So this is very interesting. Usually you just see a lot of um, you know, d docks right away in age two, and you see water battles right away. But Archibald's switching it up. He's assigned to to age one spar bar rush him. So it'll be interesting to see if Anubis is able to scout this. And Anubis, yeah, Anubis does not like sea. This is funny. Both players are playing unconventional on this map. Nubis is actually building Soros on stone, and he's just going to be going for that early second TC. So both players ignoring C at the start here at least, which you usually don't see on this map. And because the gather rate for fishing boats is very high too, so it's very nice if you get that uh, gather rate bonus. So RC Ball is scouting around Nubis's base and he does find the hunt that is a bit forward. And RC Ball is, is training a couple of our bars, but the first one is uh these first two are barely making their way. Oh, and there actually are some some links, I believe that's pronounced. Um attacking the spar bar and the scout here. And Nubis is using his scout to attack the spar bars and and kind of force them to attack him to, to slow down this rush, so it's always nice. Oh, and now Archibald is building his dock, so he's doing an age one spar bar rush, but then very quickly switching to a dock. Um, pretty, I like this, this is pretty nice. While Anubis is actually just going for that early second town center. And here we go, so this bar bar rush is going to push these villagers off of this hunt. So pretty nice pickup right there and um, he in, okay now he's going for the wood line he may even be able to kill these storehouses so or kill one of them and forcing Anubis to pull his villagers off this wood line so a lot of walking time for these villagers and there we go Anubis places his second town center right next to his first one and just that vital TC there he goes queues up some villagers and now he's making a storehouse on his berries and Archibald is once again killing um, Anubis' woodline storehouse, so that's 50 wood and a storehouse he's losing. And he's going to kill this one on hunt too, so it's actually doing quite a lot of damage. And he's already on hunt, and, or on fish on the boat, on the lake. And he's making fishing boats, he doesn't even have to worry about making, and now he's scouting the coastline for to see if Anubis has a dock. 
Um, and you've seen there's no dock, so we can just go straight to making fishing boats rather than making any char or galleys. So you're seeing two town center versus a TC and a dock. Both boomy, which one is better? And we are going to see... Do we have a... No, no, Arshi does not have any stone at this point. And he is uh, going for gold, so... Oh, and there's still four spar. Oh, that one villager got Garrison and TC just before he was gonna die. Um, oh, and this one might be going. He's gonna go down. Oh, he does go down. So Archibald's just picking up one, picked up one villager there, and just idling these. So at least, like I said, these spar bar, they so much pierce armor that they can just fight on our TCs for so long. Unlike uh, Spearman. Ooh, and Archibald's could go back. This one villager's at 8 health. One more hit and this villager would go down. And look at this. Now Archibald is building his third fishing boat. So he's going to have a really good eco from these uh, fishing boats. His food's going to be coming in very quickly. So Archibald's trying to see if he can do some more damage. Kind of uh, keeping Anubis off of this hunt. And now Archibald is moving in on the wood line here for Anubis, and he's going for another villager. Anubis does recognize it very quickly, and he pulls that villager back. Oop, there he goes, garrisons him in, and he is now using his scout to, um... Okay, there's just Spar Bar that went down. And there he goes, now he's doing a little bit of vill punching, but uh, Archibald runs, runs away right away, so forcing these villagers to walk him quite a bit far. Oh, and we got the Lynx ganging up. TC fire or scout? And three links ganging up on the spar bar. So that was the last of the spar bar rush. Ooh, and I really like this. Um, as you can see, Anubis, what what he's up to. Um, let's take a look at Archibald's base. He does have a stable now, so he's making ass and bar, and he's going to continue some pressure here to raid. Ooh, and Archibald does see this right away with his scout. Um, so he see Ar Archibald has four fishing boats. Oh, and he's actually making another one. He sh really should cancel this. So that's pretty big investment in C. And they're great, you know, when they stay alive, obviously, and they're gathering. But as soon as we get some trireams out here, they're going to be a threat to these fishing boats. And if you can kill four fishing boats, that would be huge. And there we go. We have the first triream uh, queued up for Anubis. He is he does have idle TC time right now. Both TCs are idle. Um, ooh, and there is an ass bar in the wood line, and he might lose another villager here. So you look at the villager count, 30 for Arshi and 31 for Anubis. So Anubis does still have lead, even though he does have a little bit of idle TC time. But these fishing boats do gather quicker than regular bills. And here we go. It's, one trireme is made for, um, for Anubis. And he got, he should send him over right away. Arshi ball is hiding his, trying to hide his fishing boats. And he is making his first galley now, and so there are now two triremes. I would send those guys over right away. It looks like he's trying to group up some, but um, uh, he would be good to just go right away. And we have the first galley out for Archibald. So this is very nice. You guys are going to see the first um, sea fight on on this uh, or in this best of nine. So here we go. There are five fishing boats hiding in this corner. Archibald is scared. He doesn't know what to do with these guys. And here we go. So we have galley, one galley versus three triremes. And in this game, you can dodge uh, bullet attacks. You can dodge every shot. So you're going to see these guys move their boats around pretty crazy, especially Arshu since he's down in, in boats. He's trying to dodge all these shots. You see, he just dodged that one. It looks, I think he took some damage there. He dodged that one. Oh, uh, he's still staying alive a little bit. He's trying to dodge all three of these, buy some time for when his galleys get created. But there we go, one one galley does go down. Um, and there are now some spearmen out to protect that wood line. And we do have four triremes now versus only one galley. And these five fishing boats are just sitting here idled. Because he doesn't want to gather because that would show that they're there. And that's a big investment, 500 wood right there, 100 for each. Oh, and we do have one galley go down for uh, Anubis. Oh, now the fishing boats are coming back. They're actually running into the galleys. So, 
Oh, almost took out that fishing boat in one uh, valley right there. Ooh, and the galley does go down. That, this is another very cool part of a uh, sea, is that fishing boats can repair your warships. Um, so it's very useful when you do that. But fishing boats do have low HP, so... Um, it's very APM heavy whenever you play playing on coastal or any any sea. You see, they're trying to dodge. There's so much to do. You have to dodge dodge your boats. You have fishing boats sometimes to repair. You have to manage your wood line. You see, it's getting a bit wild there, and you have to constantly train villagers. So Anubis is really he's overpowering Arcee here in this uh, on sea. And what was this six galleys to only two? Uh, Arcee was oh, he does get to train that last galley. He probably will. I think he's gonna might have to give up C here. He's trying to keep this guy alive. Ooh, and Noob is doing a good. Oh, he got picked off. 16 HP. I thought he was gonna send him back to get repaired. Can't also bring a villager onto the coastline and send back your really low HP uh, warships and just repair them with a villager from the coast. Uh, that's what Noob should have done there, but he got picked off just before that could happen. So Archibald is losing a lot here now, and this is his fifth fish fishing boat, so he loses everything on sea. It looks like he gave up at this point. And Nubis is now going to age three, and he has two docks, so he's going to be able to. Uh, so now he's going to be able to train fishing boats, and he's working on taking out these docks. Let's get a villager count. We have 52 villagers for Nubis and 44 for Archie. So uh, Nubis is actually in a very good spot right now. He has the villager lead, and he's now even queuing up fishing boats. And he, he and he won C at this point. So one dot does go down, and the other thing, even when you win C, um, when you when somebody makes units and they put the um, uh, the spawn point or whatever it's called to like your opponent's base, the units are gonna walk along the shoreline. So you can you can park your your triremes kind of on the shoreline, spread out on the on the lake. And um, and you can pick off you know pick off any units that may be coming. So this is really interesting. Arshi <clears throat> is also going H3, and he's deciding to build a dock. He's trying to sneak a dock, and uh, win C back. So this is very interesting. Um, the Greek have new ships in H3. And they're called fire ships. Uh, they're they counter galleys, but they have um. If you I'm not sure if he'll make any, but. Um, it's a very interesting unit. They kind of shoot this fireball, and it can it can be easy to dodge. Ooh, easy to dodge. Oh, and Anubis is seeing this right away, so he's gonna deny this dock. Uh, good job. And but with Persia, their age three ship is a ram ship, and it has it's a their attack you <clears throat> you cannot dodge it at all. But it's um, you have to be right you know on top of the unit to attack. So Anubis looking like he's in a really good position here. Even going to build a uh, another third town center over here. And we do have a third TC going down for Arshi. Yep, this is a jump person line. It is free to play. It's currently on like uh, basically in beta server but uh, you can most likely play for free right now. You need a key, but it's pretty easy to key. They usually just give out the keys in Discord really frequently. So if you're interested, you go to eso-community.net, um, and that's the Age of Empires 3 and Age of Empires Online forums. And you can also go you go on their Discord if somebody wants to drop either of those links. And here we go. Arshi is now pushing. He does have a good sized army here, so. He may be able to do some damage uh, to Anubis here and kind of come back a little bit. Anubis is moving his triremes uh, near his town center and the shoreline to see if he can fire, but um, the Archibald's units are just too far away from the coast. Oh, and we have an emergency fortress coming down for Anubis. He likes his emergency fortresses. And he is now killing up a lot of fishing boats, so that's going to help with this eco quite a lot. And this is a close. Um, looks like Archibald is targeting the fortress, not the villagers. Oh, he, oh, maybe one villager went down there. 
Um, well, this is very close. I think it, it I don't think it's going to get up. Oh, that is rough. The fortress gets denied basically right before it was built. So he paid pretty much the entire cost of a fortress um, just for it to get, not even get built. So that was a very nice pickup by RC Balls right there. And Nubis is uh, scrambling to get units out right now. He does have a lot of resources, but just not enough military buildings. So right now he's scrambling to drop a lot of barracks. He's going only barracks, which is interesting. And spamming hoplites. Ooh, one thing he should probably get before he should get his conditioning upgrade so that is so that he can train 20% faster. Being forced to pull all of these villagers. It's a very nice job by RC <coughs> RC trying to claw his way back in this game. And even researching um oh oh wow. Uh I go go I don't even know how you pronounce this the discipline. Uh increases training time of all your units by twenty five percent, so that would be an another one you could research. Hoplites are out, and uh, he's not going to be holding off this pressure because there won't be any more reinforcements. So let's get a quick builder count. We have 74 for Anubis and 59 for Archibald. So Archibald is still behind quite a lot in builders. And uh, there are now eight fishing boats out, so that's going to be a very good boost to Anubis's eco. Ooh, and we do have five immortal camps coming down. So Moros are, are going to counter these hoplites. Um, so it looks like Archibald is just going to try to have another timing push uh, somewhat soon, possibly. Oh, he's running all of his units here. He's not noticing. Oh, and he's losing everything right here. So very bad, uh, kind of bad job by Archie right there. Looked away from from his units for a little bit. Uh, we do have a watch post going down for RC. Uh, trying to see if there's anything out here. Nothing. We are at 85 villagers for Anubis and 69 for RC balls. And a pure hoplite army. Not sure I've ever seen this before uh, very interesting and he's actually pushing out with this with 29 hoplites um, but I think Archie saw this and he responded perfectly by dropping five immortal camps and he already has a he's starting a decent amount of immortal oh wow yeah he has a good amount of immortals out so this is actually gonna be a very bad engagement from Anubis because immortals counter um, these hoplites and uh, this could be a good pickup for Archie there are a lot of hoplites, um, but these mortars are kind of slowly coming in. Ooh, and now these trireams are starting to pick them off, though, so that's very good. Um, but these, you see the immortals, some of them are punching using their melee attack, and some of them are using their uh, bow and arrow here. And I think they're going to hold this off really well. Um, yeah. New or Anubis might have picked off some villagers there that were on the wood. They were gathering, ah, gathering gold right there. I believe he did. It looked like he did. Um, but all of his hoplites are getting cleaned up by these immortals. Ooh, and now RC is trying to... Oh, oh, he's trying to build some docks, but Anubis is not letting him. We still have more hoplites being made. And just now spammed into the other side of uh, <coughs> RC's base. Ooh, look at all these immortals with their... Just firing with their bone arrows there. Very cool. See if we can get a villager count. 89 for Anubis and 70 for Archie Balls. Oh, now we have the Immortals picking off the Trireme. And we do have one dock for Archie Balls. Is he gonna try? He's making ram ships. He's gonna try to claim back the sea. And there are only four Triremes, but oh yeah, there are a lot of fishing boats. 14 fishing boats. So Anubis has a huge part of his eco on the sea, and he only has four Triremes, which is not that many if, if four is enough to take out one ram ship but if Archibald gets a couple of ram ships here oh and Nubis looks I think he did notice the docks let's take a look at Anubis's vision he, he did see that one dock going up so um, he's not gonna he's not gonna mess around he's queuing up fire ships 
So this is very cool. You guys are gonna able to see uh, the H3 Persia warship is the ram ship. And like I said, they have to be, you know, it's a ram ship. They have to ram the ship, be right on top of it. Um, but you cannot dodge their attack. You can try to like run away from it, but you can't dodge their attack. Um, while Greek have a fire ship, which has a ranged attack, but it's kind of easy to dodge. So you'll see once they start engaging. Um, yeah, actually, Anubis said he already already has four fire ships, so um, he's actually looking like he's gonna be okay here. Um, we do have more ram ships being made for Archibalds, and we do have ooh counter attack here. A lot of immortals, and Anubis just has hoplites, so they're gonna get wrecked by these immortals. Um, Okay, now now some Sarah Sulfur are being trained, and even on the other side, the same thing, Hoplites vs. Mortals. So, okay, now finally Anubis is switching up his composition. Now he's training Hopla or yeah, Hype Test. So, they'll counter Immortals, but Immortals will also counter them. And they're not uh, Hype Test champions, so he, sh he needs to get this upgrade also. And now these Immortals are going for the wood line. Oh, we do have engagement on the sea! Oh, I'm kind of sad I missed that. But uh, Anubis very quickly cleaned up the sea, so he has a lot of food. And what fishing boats are, um, he just, and he does have some Seri, Seri so fry over here. Okay, now he's really starting to spam Seri, so that will help uh, with these immortals much, much better than uh, hoplites, you know, would. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, Anubis is gold starved. Only two villagers on gold. Um, okay, he does kind of reclaiming this gold mine yep um, let's get a villager count 82 villagers for Anubis and 84 for Arshi so now Arshi actually steals the villager lead and uh, Anubis does take back C kills the docks so oh now Spar Bar is coming in and uh, they're very tanky units so uh, Anubis is actually in a re really big gold crisis right now he can't get a safe gold. He needs to definitely build a market here and um, he needs to claim a gold mine and just make a market and sell some food and wood. Because he, he does not want to lose this due to a gold crisis. And now Archibald is, is seeing that Nubis is training a lot of Sir Sulfuri. So now Nubis is queuing up a lot of spearmen. And, spear, and the Persian spearmen are very strong and uh, are going to give the Sir Sulfuri a hard time. A lot of vital villagers for Anubis here. He is getting some gold now. Um, he okay. He's throwing down his two markets very quickly, even in base, probably just to sell. He's trying to reclaim this. Um, ooh, dropping a lot of archer ranges now. Trying to reclaim this gold mine. Big engagement here. A lot of Sarah Sulfuri, so they are going to be able to clean up this uh, mortal and Sparbari army. These Farbar are staying alive for so long since they have such high pierce. And these Sir Sulfur actually do pierce damage. And Archibald does have his mark line it's now getting established, and it's, it's a nice one. It's, you know, they have a long uh, route, so they're going to gather quite a bit of gold. And Nubis really doesn't have a market route at all. He does have a lot of resources. There he goes. He now sells a bunch of food. So now he does have some, some gold, and uh, he's able to. Um, kind of regather re himself. 85 villagers to 87. But and these f fishing spots are starting to run uh, out. He's, their boats are going a lot further, so uh, their gathering rate won't be as high either. Oh, and we have a, oh boy, we have a lot of rams coming in, and this is actually pretty tough for the Greek. Th this is a very good surprise attack, and this is going to be looking rough for Anubis because. He has a bunch of Seri, but they do pierce damage, so they're going to take so long to kill these rams. And one TC already goes down, and he has, what, five rams here, so these guys are going to do a lot of damage quickly here. Um, he is now taking out these rams. He's uh, sending some villagers to repair this, so I think that this TC won't go down. He is getting his villagers here in time to repair. And uh, so he did lose a lot of rams there. It went one TC for maybe like six rams. So it's hard to say if that was a good trade or not. Um, oh wow, 68 villagers all of a sudden. I'm not sure how Anubis lost a lot of villagers and pretty much stopped training bills. 
Um, so now I feel like RC might be looking like he's in a good spot. Um, and yeah, fights happening on both sides here. New is empty Q. Looks like he's uh, kind of confused what to do right now. And how Archie is actually gathering this gold, so that he's uh, gonna be depleting Anubis's gold mine, which is really big. And while wow, Archie or Anubis trying to build a uh, TC over here, we have 59 villagers to 87. So all of a sudden, the Archibalds is having the superior economy, and we do have some Toxtes now being trained. Oh, the TC does get up, but would oh, it might it's gonna go down. He's not repaired in time. Wow, and TC gets built and then gets destroyed right away. So that is rough. And Noob is just very gold starved right now. He's gonna have to sell some more resources, sell some wood. Oh, he is starting up his caravan route. Oh, they were gonna go to this town center, but uh, TC just got killed. He should try to claim this area really. So Nubis is uh, surviving here, We're trying to reclaim this gold mine. But it looks like Archibald's just set up better, well, a lot better for late game. Oh, and what was that? That uh, oh maybe I'm not sure if that ship was just canceled. Yep. Uh, Archibald's trying to reclaim the sea, but Nubis is on top of it. And we have two more rams coming in. Links to her attacking them, getting taking a little damage. And here we go. Anubis is gonna have to respond pretty quickly to pull some units to take care of these rams. And he is gonna go pulling the villagers to attack the rams. And that barracks goes down very quickly. Another barracks going down. He's slapping down a lot of barrackses. 70 villagers to 84 now, and it's looking like Anubis's bank is getting really low, and he's kind of uh, starved here. He does now get his caravan round up, but it's a really small one, and he and he does uh, claim the gold mine, so that's nice. But he's looking like he's in a little bit of a scary position. gathering almost all the fish on this entire map these fishing boats are now going very far to drop off the resources and Archibald is actually going to H4 now and Anubis is designed to push here but this could be a good timing push because Archibald is aging up and he is behind in pop by quite a bit. So yeah, and this is uh, Archibald's mark line. So if Anubis pushes here, this could be very good and uh, maybe get him back in this game and into a very good spot really. And here we go, very strong push from Anubis. Archibald's uh, pop is low and he just spent a lot of resources on going to age four he's almost he should maybe almost even cancel the age up because um, he's gonna lose his market here and he's gonna have to somehow get a bunch of units out and he's age he's four now so he's already pretty low on gold so let's see he does have does he have any he's building a market over here so if he can quickly switch his caravan around over here that would be very nice but he is going to lose this market and uh, probably this entire side base here. So Nubis, very good uh, counter push here. A lot of units over here also. So, Ooh, and we do have <coughs> war wagons being trained right now for RC balls, which is actually very good because there are a lot of Toxities. There are 27 Toxities and... Uh, war wagons destroy destroy range units very very uh, strongly, but they would not do much at all versus the hoplites. So if we can get the hoplites to focus the war wagons down, then he could be okay. So we 
Oh, we did not have the market built. He placed it down, but he has not started building it. Okay, he built two over here very quickly. So he does have his caravan routes going again. Uh, just not going as far, not gathering as much. I think he has to retask all of them. Uh, looks like he doesn't have that many, actually. I believe some of them died over here, too. And his fortress does go down, and now Nubis is trying to collect. Ooh, and now he's building two markets over here because he just claimed this part of the map. And now he's going to be able to fix his caravan route, where so that's going to be much more effective. And he, he deleted his two markets over here so that like the caravans wouldn't a accidentally be going to the, the short caravan route. So now Nubis is looking like he's in a good position. And honestly, Archie looked like he was about ready to win the game, but he spent... A thousand food, a thousand wood, a thousand coin, and six hundred, or a thousand gold and six hundred coin to go to H4, and that made it him so that he couldn't uh, keep up the aggression and he couldn't hold the push. So very interesting game here. And now these caravans are uh, starting a very large, uh, much longer route. And we do have two war wagons on the field. Uh, Nubis is still age 3. He is starting to get some resources banked up. He, do, he does have some people on stone. And here's that fire ship's uh, shot. You can see actually attacking landings, but you can see that fireball uh, getting shot from the ship. And it actually might be good at this point. He is. Uh, they do take up 3 populations, so you don't want to have too many warships on the sea when you're not really fighting on the sea. Oh, and here we go. We do have now have a lot of walls being placed down for Nubis and a fortress over here. So he's really... And a big engagement here. Three war wagons. There are a lot of hoplites, so they're going to work for some war wagons. But these toasties, yeah, you see these toasties are melting very quickly. And now, oh, now, okay, Nubis is pulling the rest of his army here. But now his caravan routes over here. So if he can't hold this, he's going to be in a scary position. And there are, okay, only five mortals. Um, a lot of spar bars, really, but Anubis just lost like pretty much his entire army, so now it's almost looking scary for him. Very back and forth game here, and this is his caravan route right here. So he did fortify this area, but now Archibald is pushing over here, and he once again he's gold starved, so. Yeah, 66 villagers only to 76. Honestly, both of these players probably could train more villagers on this very large map, especially Nubis. He is now queuing up some villagers. We have four war wagons on the field right now. And Archibald is about 200 pop. Oh, and we have a Palantone. So, Nubis is, yeah, he's very low on coin. This is, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to hold this. This could be the game right here. Ooh, you get the fire ship uh, to attack. Nubis needs to somehow get some more military up, and uh, he's basically really low on resources. And that Palatone is firing away at this town center, and it's going to go down very quickly. Nubis is now engaging knows that he has to just go in and, and fight and just uh, do everything he can here. Archibald needs to get these war wagons on the toasties and he does and you're seeing them go down very quickly as they do uh, area damage. But the meat of Archibald's army is actually dwindling quite a bit here so you're kind of seeing like four, uh, there are some more reinforcements now. Yeah there are now quite a lot, of, okay there's a lot of immortals and most of these are hoplites. So this looks like this is going to actually be GG, I think. Unless if Nubis can get some units together. Uh, but he is very low on resources. This could be the final push right here. And Palantone is now moving forward. Yeah, Nubis really just, he, he stopped making villagers too soon this game. It was a very back and forth game, and yep, there you go, you see the GG. Alright, so Archibald is winning this one. Archibald is taking this one 5-1. to one.
Uh, very impressive, good performance by Archibalds. Anubis also played uh, very good himself. All these games were pretty close, even though Archibalds did win it 5 to 1. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for this stream. If you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and post them in the chat right now, and I will answer anything you guys have. Oh, I do have to. All right, I'm posting a link to the Discord right now, basically where to go to download the game. Um, so if you're interested, playing Age of Empires Online, it is free to play. So I definitely encourage you guys to give it a try. Also, the community forums are ESO-community.net. I'll also post that link. All right, but well, I'm about to close it. It's a minute or two here, so... Yep, those mortars were tearing apart those hoplites. Overmade and well, hoplites, really. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Thank you to the players for playing. And that is going to be it for this one. Uh, make sure to stick around. And keep your eyes open for more Age of Empires Online streams. And like I said, tournament is going to be starting in August. So, give the game a try, and uh, uh, you're going to love it. But yep, that's it for this stream. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.